Proxmox, Virtual Machine, Graphics Card, Proxmox, Virtual Machine, Graphics Card, Proxmox, Virtual Machine, Graphics Card, PCIe Pass Through, next on Low Res DIY. So I want to take a graphics card and pass it through to uh, one of my virtual machines, a Windows virtual machine. Then I can use it for remote gaming or let's say I don't want to use this computer to do uh, the transcoding or whatever for my videos. I can offload that, that stuff to the, the virtual machine and still use my, my desktop for whatever it is that I want to do. So what are you going to need to do this? Well, obviously, the first thing you're going to need is a graphics card. And if your Proxmox machine is made up of an old desktop, or if, you, if you're lucky and have like a R710 or even hell, R, even R210s, uh, you can get 16 by PCI slots, which most graphics cards come in anymore, and, and plug it in. Well, in the case of the R210, you'd have to, you know, cut a hole in the lid and then you gotta run power to it and all sorts of stuff if you wanted to use something a little more powerful. But I'm going to be doing it in my R610. And my problem is this right here. I can only get an 8x PCI, or it only has an 8x slot. So there's, you know, a couple different options to take care of this. You can either uh, do like a lot of people do and take your card and oh, shut the picture down and cut a notch out of it. And then your 16 by will still fit in there. You're only going to have eight lanes, but you know, you can use a standard card. Now this one, this picture came from uh, the artist server. He sells all this type of stuff. Uh, don't know the guy or anything, but he, he always seems to have everything you need. I'll leave a link to his uh, uh, eBay store in the description if you're interested. Uh, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to, you know, go through all that hassle or anything. And I just so happen to have, have uh, this guy right here. Let's go back. This guy right here, it is an old GT730, I think is what it is. Yeah, 730 Zotac card. I say old, but I bought it about uh, two years ago, basically to use to set up servers, and then I could pull the card out and everything else. But it's only a four by. You, it, you can try to find one of these, and then you can just slap it in and use it. Of course, this is, uh, it's not going to be the most powerful thing in the world, but depending on what you're wanting to use it for, this might be just fine, which it will be just fine for me. So video card is one thing you need. And the other thing you'll need to buy is one of these guys right here. Yeah, can't really see it. It won't focus. But all it is is an HDMI dummy plug that makes the video card and your computer think that a, a monitor is plugged in because sometimes uh, it won't boot up if it doesn't think that there's a monitor plugged into it or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy into my server back here and uh, we'll get started on uh, going through the steps needed to uh, do the PCIe pass through. Okay, with our system all booted up and everything, we're going to uh, go into the shell of our node in this case is the node is low res test because i'm doing it on my r210 just to make sure everything goes smoothly before i really start messing with the r610 and uh trying to avoid messing that one up so we are going to we're going to adjust the uh, grub startup, which basically grub uh, starts up before the actual system does, and it tells the kernel what it needs to do and everything. So we're going to edit that file. And the way we're going to edit that is we're going to go down here to right here, grub command line Linux default quiet. We're going to take that out and we're going to replace it with this big long string here. And of course, I'll leave all these uh, all this information down in the description for you. And we're replacing it with the quiet still there, but it's going to make the IOMMU 
on. It's going to turn it on so we can use the the, uh, pa the PCIe pass through. All this other stuff here is extra stuff that I'm throwing in there that I basically just found on a website that, you know, like if I just did the Intel IOMMU on with this system, it wouldn't work. But these extra commands forced it into working. So, all right. Add that command, control X, and yes, we want to save it. As soon as we get done with that, we want to update grub. And uh, once it gets finished updating, we are going to go ahead and restart the system and put those changes into effect. So it's done now, so let's reboot. All right, now that it's rebooted, we want to edit this file right here, the ETC modules. And we're just gonna scroll down to the bottom, give it a space, and we're gonna add these lines right here. And uh, what they're doing is they're telling the kernel how to utilize the, the virtual function IO and, and give us the ability to, to do pass-throughs and stuff like that. So we'll save it. Yes, we wanna save it. And we're gonna reboot again. With the server back up and running, we are going to run this command here, which is basically the, an echo command, which is going to make this file right here, etc modprob.d uh, iommu unsafe, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to add this line right here, this whole option, uh, vfio etc 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 basically it's a, we're remapping the system a little bit and some cpus some systems are not good at accepting that so it, it'll throw an error or a warning saying that it's unsafe what you're trying to do this will basically tell it we don't care do it anyway you know that's what we want to do then we are going to run this command right here and he's going to make that file right there for us, which is gonna say this stuff right here, which is the the old way of doing some of this stuff was through KVM and it's going to tell it to basically ignore KVM. We're not using it anymore, we're using the VFIO. So we hit enter and that is, is that part right there. So we create those files for us. The next thing we wanna do is create another file, a blacklist file. And we want to blacklist certain drivers, which are happen to be all the drivers for video cards out there. And what this file will do is it's not going to allow the host system to grab a hold of that video card and use it for whatever it wants to do. It's going to, you know, make it still use the, the onboard video system that's on the on the motherboard control, control x yes we want to save that and now the system is set up to pass something through to to a virtual machine but it doesn't know what it uh, what we want to pass through to that virtual machine so we're going to set that up now we're going to run this command here and what it will do is it will tell us uh, it'll show us all of the devices that can be passed through to a virtual machine and we're looking for the graphics card and right here vga compatible controller nvidia corporation uh geoforce gt 710 it was a 710 i thought it was a 730 whatever 710 but uh the number we're worried about is this right here 100 and it's the pci card address so we want to remember that we'll scroll back down and we want to run that this next command and back here where it says the pci card address let's go ahead and put that 100.0 in there and actually let's run it without the o and that'll give us both of the uh, uh things on that on that video card because it's got a video controller and it's got a sound card on it also and we're just going to do both of them or give our, ourselves the option of having both of them now that we ran this that command this number right there is the uh 
Uh, that's the GPU vendor number. And you need to write that down or copy and paste it or something like that. What the heck's going on here, man? Copy and paste it or something like that. Myself, I'm just going to copy and paste it over to uh, Notepad or something like that. And the reason we want to copy and paste those and save those is because we're going to create another file uh, and we're going to add one line to it. And right here where it says GPI, uh, GPU number and audio number, let's take those out. And we're going to copy and paste those two numbers in. Control X to exit. Yes, we want to save it. And we have that file created. And basically, that's just telling uh, VFIO that, hey, this is what we want to pass through, take control of it, yada, yada, yada. Next thing we want to do is we want to update it with this command right here. Uh, hit Enter and let it run through its, its whole cycle. Okay, after it updates, we're gonna do one more reboot. And once the system reboots, we're finally gonna be ready to uh, create a virtual machine. Everything's set up in the host system and we're gonna start using it in the virtual system uh, once this thing gets back up and running. All right, let's go ahead and make our virtual machine. So we're going to come up here to the right, create VM, give it a click, name it whatever you want to name it. I'm just going to call it Windows. I'm going to click Next. It's going to ask for the uh, ISO image. I've already uploaded this. We're going to use Windows. We're going to change the type over to Microsoft Windows. We're going to click Next. It's going to ask for the graphics card. Leave it alone. Don't touch it. Just let it pick the uh, the default one. Our BIOS, though, we're going to change that to OVMFUEFI. Our storage is going to ask you for the storage for that. We're going to make it our local storage over here. And then our machine, we're going to change it to Q35. And we're going to click Next. I'm going to change this to SATA instead of IDE. And I'm going to give it, let's say, 100 gig, even though the system doesn't have a lot on it. Uh, next, I'm going to give it all the CPUs, all the cores that this system has. Next, this system only has 4 gig of RAM on it, so we'll just use half of it for this machine and half of it for the, uh, for the OS. Click Next. We'll leave the network card alone. And let's create the machine. Once it's finished creating, let's go ahead and start it up. Go ahead and click enter there to make sure it boots from the, uh, the virtual CD. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and install Windows now, but I'm not gonna subject you to that pain. The, you go ahead and do it on your own. If you d haven't done it before, go ahead and check this video out over here and it will run you through the steps of creating a virtual machine uh, on a Proxmox system. Uh, the one thing to remember is make sure that you pick Windows Pro. You don't want Home, you want Windows Pro. Windows installed, let's go ahead and expand this guy out. Uh, you remember when I told you to make sure to, uh, I hope you remember, because it was just a couple seconds ago. If you didn't remember that, holy crap, brother, you got some problems. Anyway. Like I said, install Windows Pro. The reason we did that is we want to use a remote desktop. So click on your little window, the little gear right here, and let's just go ahead and type in remote and remote desktop settings right there. We'll click on that. I've already enabled it, but let's just disable it and confirm. So when you turn it on, it's going to ask you to confirm it. Go ahead and confirm it. It's one thing we want to do real quick. Something else we want to do is we want to 
find out what exactly our the IP address of this machine is. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to click on View Hardware and Connection Properties. And we'll scoot on down. And what we're looking for is this number right here. See where it says IPv4 address? This one right here, that is what we want. So write it down, memorize it, whatever you need to do with it, you know, write a sky letter, whatever. Just remember that's what it is. And before we jump back out of this, I just want to show you, I installed DaVinci Resolve, which is a video editing program. It's the one that, that I use. If we double click on it and try to start it, you'll see that it, it won't be able to start because it's looking for an OpenCL capable GPU, which the, the we set it up as the default. So it's running off the motherboard. That's not it. It's not going to work. So it's not going to run. So let's go ahead and shut this guy down. Once it gets done shutting down, we want to go ahead and click on hardware and we want to add. And what do we want to add? A PCI device. And the device we want to add, we're going to scroll down until we find where is it at? Right there, the Geoforce GT710. The one right under it is the audio controller that's on the, the video card. Not worried about that. We're going to click on that. And then we want to click on All Functions, Primary GPU, and PCI Express. Let's click Add. Give it a few, few seconds to, to complete the Add process. Let's click on Council. And let's start our machine back up. What's going on here? It's not starting, huh? What's the summary say? Well, the summary says it's not that it is starting. So, oh, that's right. We just changed the video card from the one on the motherboard to the, the video card we installed that we're uh, passing through. So once we do that, your council right here, it's not gonna work anymore for seeing what's going on in the virtual machine. That's one of the reasons we wanted to go ahead and get the uh, the IP address of the machine. So on your desktop, you can go down to your little hourglass or if you have the search bar, whichever, type in remote. It's gonna ask for a remote desktop connection. This is where you're gonna type that IP address in and you're gonna click connect. Now we're going to have to go ahead and click more choices because the uh, my desktop uh, login is different than what we set up for the virtual machine. So let's go ahead and type in low res and give it the password and click OK. Give it a couple of seconds. It's going to give you this warning. It's going to say, you know, the remote computer could not be authorized whatever it's just safety measures that windows and everything else sets up for you so let's just click yes and now we're logging into that virtual machine but we're using the remote desktop instead of the console that is uh associated with proxmox i'm just going to click that unpin to let that disappear up into the top okay so you can see we're we're logged on now and uh, uh, everything's working, but it's not working at its its full extent because just like when you uh, install Windows on a, a, a all metal box and you need to go out and get the drivers for your your motherboard and for your uh, graphics card and for whatever else you have installed in that machine, you need to do that here for this graphics card that we're passing through. And it's an NVIDIA card, so I'm just going to go out and I'm going to download the, the GeForce uh, experience and let it install everything for me. Okay, now that the drivers are finally installed, let's go ahead and try that DaVinci Resolve again. All right, there you go. It's uh, up and running. Now, I would go ahead and throw a couple video clips in there and start it up and show you that it works. Hey, it works. Trust me, it works. 
but the only reason I'm not going to do that is because of the lack of resources on this machine and I've gotten enough of a headache waiting for it to install the drivers and things like that. So anyway, it works. It, it just depends on the, the speed of it depends on how much resources you devote to that virtual machine. So like I said, it works. Woo woo. All right, graphics card passed through a virtual machine, remote desktop set up. You can use it for remote uh, gaming or whatever, anything you might have in mind for it. Uh, if this was, you know, one of your great white buffaloes, great white buffalo, well, now you know how to tame it and get everything under control. So if you like this video, if it helped you out, go ahead and reach down and karate chop that like button and roundhouse kick that subscribe button. And I just want to say thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.